the idea here of shapes of distributions are extremely important because it's the shape of distributions that will help dictate to us later how we will actually choose the appropriate analytical technique. Now there are, are several shapes that are common and have common names. The most common that we work with looks kind of like this. And I'm doing this with a continuous curve, but in reality what you would see is a histogram that would look something like this. And the, or when you draw a continuous curve over the histogram, you get this shape that's commonly referred to as a bell shape. Or sometimes simply referred to as mound shaped. Later we'll actually attach a more formal name to this. We'll actually name this, but for right now we just refer to it as the bell curve or a mound shaped curve. Now if you did a histogram, and let's just say the histogram turned out something like this. You can see here that there's this tail kind of going off to the left. And when we see a distribution like that, and I'm going to draw that continuous curve again, I just roughly like that, there we go. It's just, I can see a tail going to the left. This is distribution is referred to as being skewed. And specifically, it's skewed left. Likewise, if you had a histogram that perhaps looks something like this, again, if I just lightly draw a curve, I can see the tail goes to the right. We would say that this distribution is skewed to the right. Now, a uniform distribution, in theory, looks like this, where there's no variation. It's just uniform all the way across. Now, in reality, unless you make up data, you never see a distribution that's perfectly normal, or I'm sorry, perfectly uniform. What you would see is something that's approximately uniform. You know, some variability maybe looks like this. Their overall shape to this is essentially this box. So this is approximately uniform. And, and in reality, we just referred to this as being a uniform distribu distribution. Now, we haven't talked about modes yet, and we will in the next chapter. But a mode is essentially, we'll do a histogram, a peak that pops up that is obviously bigger than everybody else around it. When you look back here at this approximately, or the skewed right distribution, I had a mode right here. This is the big guy. Over here, this bell shape, there's this guy that's the biggest of all. That, that would be the mode. Over here, that would also be the mode. When you look at a distribution and you do your curve like this and you see two obvious mounds, this would be referred to as bimodal. Likewise, if you do something, and I'm, just, I'm not going to draw the histogram, I'm just going to draw it out like this, and it's obviously three peaks, we would refer to this as being trimodal. And of course, we're not going to stop there. However, beyond trimodal, I'm going to draw something here with, with four obvious peaks. Four obvious peaks and beyond, we typically simply say that is multimodal. And multimodal distribution is actually pretty important because this could be cyclic in some form. There could be some type of temporal component where these are seasons and we're seeing peaks of sales at the uh, peak of different seasons or, or something to that effect. Now these shapes are the most common shapes that you should recognize right away. The ones that we've uh, attached names to. And 
not every distribution C will actually fall into one of these categories. You can see something that just looks weird. It's just different. Well, it is what it is. And you may not specifically be able to attach one of these names to it, and that's okay. But once again, these are the most common shapes that we see, and you should be very familiar with them.